boy. Don't mind me, just oily as hell. All right, ninth injection time. So, I'm gonna go over some drawings that have been done because I haven't talked a lot or I can't really show you guys uh, exactly what changes are going on downstairs, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of something I would want to know if I was going through this. <laughs> so today is day 120. I have no idea if the date for last time was accurate. What was it 92, 93? Okay, well this I'm sure is the correct date. It is day 120 because October 25th was my first injection. I thought it was the 16th, but I got that wrong. I've got more little uh, bottles of testosterone ready to go because my dose got up to 0.5 milliliters. So this is going to be my second 0.5 ml milliliter injection. But I'm here to talk about clitoral growth. Bottom growth. I already made one video on bottom growth when it started to appear. I think that was about a month into the whole transitioning experience. Um, it started to just feel different when I would wash myself down there in the shower. Um, it started to feel more sensitive when I was riding my bike. I could definitely feel it when it was against underwear, against rough underwear. kind of wish I had my cameraman again today. Makes the shots have so much more action in them. But when I was gonna think about when they asked me, like, what are you looking to what are your goals for transitioning? I didn't mention bottom growth at all because it's not something I had given a lot of thought to. It's not something I thought that I wanted, but it's something I pretty much knew was going to happen um, because it really does happen to every person who takes testosterone is there's clitoral enlargement. Um, it's called a phallus, or you could call it a penis, though um, scientifically, medically definition, it's not, because it does not have a urethra um, going through it. It is biologically very similar, I believe. It's certainly very small. I don't even see it. Oh, there it is. And just like that, ninth injection is down. I've been making sure to pull my um, fat over on the injection site because the needle is only an inch long and I want to make sure it goes through all of the fat and gets into the muscle because it doesn't absorb through the fat the right way. It should go into the muscle. Doctor's orders. So for your benefit, I have <laughs> done an artist's interpretation of what my genitalia looked like, um, just the front view, on day zero and on day 120, which is today. Um, and I'll note some of the finer differences I couldn't really draw too well. I didn't feel it was necessary to draw an entire like open spread of what's going on down there because the only change you can really see is at the front, at the top, at the clitoris. If I had to give it a measurement, uh, I would say that full growth is only about a centimeter, which is about like half an inch from there, nail tip to nail tip. Um, it's very small, um, but it's definitely very sensitive because it's got a lot of nerve endings down there and it's, it's suddenly much bigger and literally more excited. I technically have like a foreskin now when I started showering more. I started just kind of taking two fingers and just pulling back a little bit um, the the skin that was kind of hooded over the clitoral hood I believe is you know the other word for the skin there but it's kind of now like a tiny foreskin it's very sensitive when the water hits it to be sure so day zero this is what uh, I looked like this is very normal looking just the pubis mons, pubic hair that goes down onto the thighs, um, very hairless stomach. I had some fine little fuzzy like peach hair on my stomach. Um, 
and you could really only see just like the little folds at the front just kind of like that little camel toe I've heard it called um, and you'll see the difference when I hold up day 120 so what it looks like now um, obviously there's been growth right here when I look at myself in the mirror it's no longer just the two folds of skin there's now something else just kind of hanging out down there um, it's very shaded I know the red looks very uh, bright but it's really just a in shadow a little pink piece of me um, there's a little bit more hair I think on my thighs and then there's a little bit of darkened hair under my navel um, I drew in like the slightest like happy trail but it's still very faint as well my leg hair is still very faint um, and so as you can see uh, it's really from not that much it's just a little something extra going on like I used the word um, to describe it before as like um, as like puffy um, because it is just kind of like a little bit puffy um, it really does look like if you just take your fingers and do like that like it just kind of looks like that like there's just a little just a little something right there and it's really not hindered my life um, I was afraid I would not like bottom growth um, but instead it's been really either not an issue or something that I find helpful gives me a little confidence that I actually have something in my pants now um, which I've never besides sexually felt a need for I keep wondering like about those stand to pee devices and how they just kind of they just kind of cup under and try and direct urine flow out of like a fake prosthetic penis but they're pretty expensive and I don't know if I'd ever be okay like peeing around anyone else I think I'd just pee sitting down or I don't know we'll cross that road when we come to it but yeah if anyone cares to notice how it's changed it's just slightly different um but certainly much different than before when there was like visually nothing there to see and now there's something you can recognize but it's like, hey, I'm a little bit different. And genital growth from hormones is permanent. Like this um, will never recede. As my dose is going up now, I think it will grow a little bit more, maybe another half centimeter or a centimeter. Very exciting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't get anything like morning wood or a hard on. Um, I think it's just very much too small. It's pretty much the same as normal arousal normal arousal for uh, biological women with the clitoris swells because it's it looks remarkably similar when you just google a picture of like enlarged clitoris female woman like it just looks like that and actually really like a lot of it's hidden behind like the skin so when you see pictures of like trans men showing off their equipment they'll be like pulling up their skin um, to show off like what's there because most of it's kind of just like hidden I've always, I've always dreamed about or wondered like if I just woke up in another body with a different genitalia or even if nothing was different, if I just woke up with the opposite genitals, um, what I would do and I certainly would like stand up to pee, I would probably have to wear my pants differently, I'd have to relearn how to sit on my bike, I would want to helicopter it, I'd want to measure it, I'd want to shower with it, I'd want to dry it off, I'd want to make little faces on it. And I always wonder, like, whenever I hear about, like, if men woke up with the opposite uh, genitalia, they'd just be like, I'd just lock myself inside. I'd never go outside. I'd be so scared. I would just stay in. I'm like, wow, that's... That's very telling of how you view <laughs> what having a vagina is like, because I'm really going to be just a man with a vagina a lot. And uh, no one has to know. No one ever... Unless if I tell them, would. Uh, hopefully if I start growing out a little bit more beard, which has been a pathetic journey so far. I don't even have much of a mustache. Um, yeah, comment like if what you would do if you woke up with the opposite genitals. Funniest answer wins nothing um, besides internet points. And yeah, see you later.